Good evening and welcome to the City Council meeting of January 12th. At this point in time, I would like to invite all of you to please rise if you are able and pay attention to Council Member Padilla for the invocation to be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I ask that you give us a second while we transition the camera from the regular screen onto the flag so that we can proceed with the Pledge of Allegiance. Councilman Padilla. Thank you, Mayor. If I may ask your indulgence and that of the body before introducing our guest, Pastor Frazier, I'd like to ask for a quick moment of silence for the officers and civilians who were injured last Wednesday at the Capitol. So if I could just have a moment of silence. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to introduce Pastor Carl Frazier. Many of you know him. He's a very active person in our community. Car Pastor Frazier pastors a multicultural congregation at New Hope and Love Community Church here in Topeka. He serves the community in many leadership capacities. Uh, to name just a few, he has been the Social Justice Ministry Consultant, Central Region for the Kansas Bureau of Investigation, the Vice Chair of the Center for Peace and Justice, worked with the Topeka Gun Violence Task Force, past chair of the Human Tra Trafficking Task Force, and a chaplain for the Topeka Police Department. Carl's retired from serving almost 35 years for the United States Department of Agriculture in the financial area. He previously worked for the Kansas City Health Department HIV Services Division as program manager of the housing for people with HIV and AIDS. Carl's memberships have included, but are not limited to, the Sunflower Foundation Fellow, a lifetime member of Alpha Phi Alpha, a Association of Government Accountants, the National Association of Black Accountants, and the who's who among professionals. He is married to Lanessa Walker Frazier, and they have three lovely children, Oranta, Carly, and Emerson, and two wonderful grandchildren. Thank you, Pastor Frazier, for coming to our meeting tonight. Amen. Hey, thank you. Let us pray. Grace, gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for another opportunity for us to come together. Lord, I just ask you to bless this country, Lord, with all the torments and uh, all the things that's going on all over the America, Lord, that you, you may be able to bring peace to this, this world, Lord, this country, even the state of Kansas, Lord. But I just ask, Lord, that you bless this council meeting, uh, every person on this on this committee, on the council, city council, bless their family, bless their health, bless their finance, bless them all through, Lord, all the things that uh, we might need for this city, Lord. Bless them with the decision they have to make, Lord, from decision from the north plan to the south, from the east to the west, that affect all the people of this city, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity. And Lord, I just ask you, Lord, all the things that's going on in this world, Lord, we need you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please allow us a second to get the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic, to the republic for which it stands. Which it stands. One nation One. under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this point in time, we proceed with the roll call. Mayor Dela Isla. Here. Council members Hillard. Here. Valdivia Acala. Here. Ortiz. Here. Emerson. Here. Padilla. Nagger. Here. Dobler. Here. Duncan. Here. And Lesser. We have nine present. We received notice that Councilman Lesser was not gonna be here with us this evening. Um, our thoughts are with him. Um, 
Pastor Frazier, thank you for being here. I get the pleasure of seeing Pastor Frazier every Wednesday uh, for our pastor's meeting. He's always full of great commentary. Um, we appreciate your leadership in our community. We now move on to the appointments, if the clerk would read. Appointments are um, items 2A, B, and C are board appointments recommending the reappointment of Linda Shove Morgan and Vince Fry and the appointment of Daniel Clarizio to the Topeka Tourism Business Improvement District Advisory Board for a term ending December 31, 2022. And D is a board appointment recommending the reappointment of Nelda Henning to the Board of Building and Fire Appeals for a term ending December 31, 2022. We have heard the, uh, the, the appointments. Uh, the mayor does not vote here. What is the pleasure of the body? Move, Move approval. We have a motion for approval by Councilman Emerson, a second by Councilwoman Hiller. Uh, additional comments or questions about the appointments? Seeing none, we proceed by voting. Council members Hiller? Yes. Valdivia Acla? Yes. Ortiz? Yes. Emerson? Yes. Padilla? Councilman Padilla? Yes. Uh, Councilmember Nager? Yes. Dobler? Yes. And Duncan? Yes. We have eight yes. Motion passes. We now move on to the consent agenda. If the clerk would read. A is an ordinance introduced by city manager Brent Trout, allowing and approving city expenditures for the period of August 29 through September 25, 2020, and enumerating said expenditures therein. B is an ordinance introduced by city manager Brent Trout, allowing and approving city expenditures for the period of September 26 through October 30, 2020, and enumerating said expenditures therein. C are minutes of the regular meeting of January 5, 2021, and there are no applications. <clears throat> We have heard the consent agenda. What is the pleasure of the body? Councilman Dobler moves for approval. Mike, uh, Councilman Padilla seconds. Comments or questions on the consent agenda? Seeing none, we proceed by voting. Mayor Daly Isla? Yes. Council members Hiller? Yes. Valdivia Acla? Yes. Ortiz? Yes. Emerson? Yes. Padilla? Yes. Nager? Yes. Dobler? Yes. And Duncan? Yes. We have nine yes, motion carries. We now move on to the action items. Action item A, if the clerk would read. A is an ordinance introduced by City Manager Brent Trout, amending the district map referred to and made a part of the zoning ordinances by Section 1850.050 of the Topeka Municipal Code by providing for certain changes in zoning on property located at 3029 Northwest US 24 Highway from M2 Multiple Family Dwelling District to I-1 Light Industrial District. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Tonight, uh, Director Finder will go through the request that has been made for a zoning change at American Legion Post 400. Bill? Uh, thank you, Mr. City Manager. Uh, tonight's rezoning proposal is, is pretty straightforward. Um, the property along Highway 24 has been used as an American Legion uh, post since the 1970s. Uh, it is zoned as multiple family. They uh, are transitioning out of that use, would like to market it for uh, another use and sell the property. Uh, the proposed land use for the area is a commercial highway designation and most of the surrounding properties are light industrial so uh, that is what they are proposing a light industrial rezoning to i1 um, very consistent with uh, plans and in, in surrounding land use and zoning so uh, with that the planning commission recommended unanimous approval uh, and staff did as well i'll stand for any questions any questions for mr Fyander? If memory serves me right, this one requires ex parte communication. So therefore, at this point in time, it is my duty to notify the body and to inform the public that if any of us has received any sort of communication, whether it have been uh, minutes, calls, emails, 
um, that we are still able to provide uh, uh, an unbiased decision with regards to this matter. So if anybody would like to speak up about their ability uh, to make an unbiased decision, this is your time to do so if you have received uh, ex parte communication. See no one that has received, oh, Councilwoman Ortiz. You muted yourself, ma'am. Sorry, I received an email and I can make a biased decision. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, see none other uh, at this point in time. Uh, what is the pleasure of the body? Move Councilman. to approve. Second. Moved by Councilman Padilla, seconded by Councilwoman Valdivia Alcala. Additional comments or questions before we proceed by voting. Being none, we proceed by voting. Mayor De La Isla? Yes. Council members Hiller? Yes. Valdivia Acla? Yes. Ortiz? Yes. Emerson? Yes. Padilla? Yes. Nager? Yes. Dobler? Yes. And Duncan? Yes. Yes. We have nine yes, motion passes. We move on to item B, if the clerk would read. He is an approval of supplemental agreement to City of Topeka contract number 48941 between the City of Topeka and AFT Kansas Local 6406, amending certain terms and conditions of employment pertaining to zoo employees. City Manager. Hey, Mayor. We discussed this item last week. Um, and you were provided the information regarding the supplemental agreement with AFT regarding the zoo employees. And uh, if there are any questions, staff is available to answer them. Questions for the city manager or for the... Seeing none, what is the pleasure of the body? Councilman Duncan. And this isn't really, a, I guess it's a question, but maybe just for the edification of the public, whether the city manager or staff could just walk through the process in a condensed form of what we've worked with on staff as we work towards the zoo thing so people understand this has been a cooperative, collaborative effort with all of the folks over, all of the staff at the zoo, not just a unilateral sort of approach <laughs> to what we're doing. Sure, I'll cover some and then if uh, Lisa has anything I missed, she can chime in. Um, basically, we've had several meetings uh, and Jackie probably can too. The, uh, there were several meetings that the city had with, uh, with the representatives from AFT to go through the various components that would allow uh, employees that are currently with the city to move over to the new organization, Friends of the Topeka Zoo, that would be managing the city if the city Council approved eventually the uh, the management agreement that, that we've been talking about for the last few months. The general process talked about how people would transition, what would be involved related to their uh, continuation of uh, sick leave, how that would transfer over, vacation, how it would transfer over, and other opportunities that they would have as far as moving over to open positions at FOTS. And so that was the process to make sure that we were taking care of the employees in the best way we could and ensuring that they had opportunity to transition to the new organization that would be running the zoo. You know, the anticipation will be is that most of them will basically do the same current job that they have, but under a new type of organization. And so that was really the purpose of, of what we attempted to do. And I think that through the negotiation process with the city, we came to good decisions related to that. The union ratified the, the agreement and they feel comfortable with it. And I think we have a good agreement that protects the employees for this type of transition. Thank you, I appreciate that. That's one of the big questions I've had about this and, and I, I won't speak for any other member of the council, but I know I can say to a person, a priority for many of us has been to make sure that if we choose to go forward, that taking care of employees and their future and has been of utmost importance. So just wanted to reiterate that and let the public know that this was a long process, not a not a quickie and that we, we did our best, we've done our best to work with them to, to get something done. So thank you for that. 
You bet. Appreciate the opportunity to explain more depth. Additional comments or questions? Deputy Mayor. Oh, I saw you raise your hand. Pardon me. What is the pleasure of the body? Move approval. Did I get frozen again? I am sorry. Did somebody make a motion? Maybe you had a second. Okay, so we have a motion by Councilman Dobler. Do we have a second? Councilwoman Nager. Okay. Additional comments or questions before we call the vote? Uh, at this point in time, you proceed by voting. Mayor De La Isla? Yes. Council Members Hiller? Yes. Council Members Valdivia Acla? No. No. Um, Ortiz? Yep. Emerson? Yes. Padilla? Yes. Nager? Yes. Dobler? Yes. And Duncan? Yes. So we have eight yes. Council Member Valdivia Acla voting no. The motion carries. We now move on to the non action items. Non action item A. If the A is discussion related to the East Topeka North Neighborhood Plan as an element of the comprehensive plan. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Well, excited tonight to have the opportunity for staff to present the work that's been done in the East Topeka North area uh, on their neighborhood plan. And so to kick it off, we'll have Bill Finder, Director of Planning and Development, to uh, start that process. So, Bill, kick it off for us, please. Thanks, uh, Mr. City Manager. Good evening again, Governing Body. Uh, I, all, I am too pleased to present East Topeka North uh, neighborhood plan. It's been 18 years, long years since we last were there. Uh, I believe that's uh, where we met Councilwoman Ortiz for the first time. Uh, so <laughs> I was project manager. My staff at the time was Dan Warner. So we're back here again tonight, 18 years later. Funny how things uh, change, or the more they change, the more they stay the same. So uh, Dan will present tonight. Uh, division director for, uh, for planning and project manager for this. Uh, and he, you'll, you'll hear some of the challenges we had. Um, I won't steal his thunder, but as you know, we have a process, a pretty successful model that we go through with each neighborhood. Uh, and we try to improve upon that every time we do it. We also try to tailor those uh, needs uh, to meet uh, the neighborhood, because uh, each neighborhood is different. Uh, this year, or I guess it's last year now, we had to tailor around a, a pandemic as well. So what you'll hear here from Dan is, again, how we went from adapting to a pretty heavy in-person engagement uh, to the new reality of, of vir virtual engagement. And because of that, we're, we're three or four months behind but we're here and without uh the help i want to thank councilwoman valdivia alcala and ortiz uh, we would not be here even three to four months late um without their help uh, but we definitely wanted to get it right and i think uh, i feel like we we did that so thank you and um so without further ado uh mr warner take over thank you bill um share my screen okay council mayor uh, this is the presentation for the east topeka north neighborhood plan um, bryson risley who is the department's neighborhood planner was actually the lead planner on this project and as bill mentioned um, we we worked on a plan in 2002 so this plan is updating that particular neighborhood plan um, so East Topeka North was selected as the sort neighborhood for 2020. And sort means stages of resource targeting. So a quick little uh, reminder of what sort means. So this is a three year process to provide targeted infrastructure and housing improvements. So year one, which is the planning process is what we are 
uh, finishing up currently. Years two and three are 21 and 22, project design and implementation. So again, as a reminder, there's 1.7 million available in sort infrastructure funding and about 330,000 available in federal housing funds. Uh, something I will touch on later is that we are going to use some of the sort funds as matching funds to help provide additional projects for this neighborhood. So the East Topeka North planning area is bound by the Burlington Northern Santa Fe rail lines on the north and west, Southeast 6th Avenue on the south, and Deer Creek on the east. I'll give you a quick note about uh, process and background. So we kicked off this neighborhood plan in February of 2020. Uh, we had a very well attended kickoff meeting. Uh, we really felt this was a good start to the neighborhood plan and uh, we, we felt we had a good cross section of the neighborhood that attended that meeting. Uh, shortly thereafter, as everyone knows, COVID entered our lives and uh, we shifted to having virtual committee meetings. So we had a couple Zoom meetings with our plan review committee and then decided to pause our process and, and kind of evaluate where we are with um, our process, given that we had to switch to a virtual process, we couldn't meet with people any longer. Uh, so we took some time to kind of brainstorm ideas. Uh, we also involved community engagement staff in that, in that effort. Um, so we were able to get our committee meetings done um, in the fall and had a final meeting, final meetings actually on December 9th and 10th. So, uh, the meeting on the 9th was an English meeting and the meeting on the 10th was a Spanish meeting. So we had two final meetings. That dual language uh, strategy is something that we employed throughout this process. So anytime that we uh, sent notice out for uh, meetings or, or whatever, it included an English and a Spanish um, version. Uh, we Our neighborhood planner, Bryson, uh, put together an English website and also a Spanish website. So the information on both of those websites is the same. Um, so any notices, surveys, et cetera, that went out were in both um, English and Spanish. Um, so we went to the Planning Commission in December and they recommended approval of this document. So a quick uh, note about the history of the neighborhood. Um, East Topeka North was part of downtown Topeka originally. Um, 1951, uh, the flood inundated, inundated much of this neighborhood. Um, 1960s development of I-70 isolated the neighborhood. Um, in 1996, Scott Magnet Elementary was built. Um, so again, this is just a few uh, bullet points on the history of the neighborhood. It's obviously got more, there's more in the plan. Uh, the image on the right is a 1913 Sanborn fire insurance map. Um, and I point that out to uh, to let you know that we have these, these uh, Sanborn maps digitally now in our GIS system so we can, uh, very easily kind of find some history on our older properties through those maps. Some highlights from the 2020 plan. Uh, so we ultimately, um, through our sort of reboot of our process, uh, began to utilize surveys and ArcGIS story maps to supplement the public engagement process. So the, the surveys were digital, but also we mailed surveys. So we want to make sure we caught the people that weren't necessarily going to participate on the dig digital side. So people were able to uh, fill those surveys out and send them back. Uh, the nice thing about the story maps is we can pre present a lot of information in a very easy to follow format, and it allows people to um, comment at the end. So it's a digital presentation that's uh, very slick and very easy to follow in, in the comment section. Uh, so we've used that story map on other projects and, and it's worked well and we, can, we plan to continue to use that, that format. Um, so the plan also uh, continues to push for home ownership and investment in single family housing, um, investment in target areas that improve safety and access to Scott Magnet and improve linkages to Southeast Sixth Avenue. I mentioned the leveraging earlier. So we had asked the neighborhood um, at our final meeting for the ability to leverage the sort infrastructure funding, some of that funding, so we could increase the total number of projects. And they were agreeable to that. And so um, I'll show you some more uh, implementation uh, charts towards the end and that will become clear what we're doing with that. 
so the next is a summary of the neighborhood health. Um, so this, this uh, health map um, shows a pretty interesting story, I think. So uh, the neighborhood there's, so on the bottom there is highlighted the block groups, the, the composite rating for the neighborhood. So between 2000 and 2014, uh, there wasn't a single block, there was at least a block group that had intensive care in all those years. Um, in 2017, there was no intensive care. It was the last time we measured health. So that was the first time that that had happened where there was no intensive care in the neighborhood. So the data is telling us a story that the neighborhood's improved. Um, but people that have visited um, Southeast 6th Street, for instance, in the last few years have probably noticed some real improvements along that, that street as well. So people can see that for themselves. And we think that it's, it's not a stretch to say that that investment that's happening on 6th Street is bleeding into the neighborhood and that has improved things as well. So this plan isn't really about starting a revitalization for East Topeka North. It's really about continuing that, that existing improvement going forward. So briefly about housing conditions, the single, um, the median value for single family homes is about 21,000. Of all the units in the East Topeka neighborhood, 70% are single or two family. And uh, through the survey of housing conditions, we identified nearly 3,000 housing deficiencies. There are pavement, sidewalk, curb and gutter projects that are needed throughout the neighborhood. I will point out though that there, has, there have been new pavement projects implemented northwest of Shunga Creek and also sidewalk projects west of the school, which was part of uh, the pedestrian plan implementation. This future land use map is fairly consistent with what was adopted in 2002. Not much has changed from a future land use perspective. What we're highlighting here um, on number one there is a uh, encouraging a, a mixed use redevelopment of the Eastboro Shopping Center. So instead of it being just a single use strip center, uh, potentially redeveloping that in the future with housing, retail, and perhaps other uses. Um, and then number two there is a potential gateway to Scott Magnet from 6th Street at 6th and California. The, one of the big efforts for this neighborhood plan is to identify target areas. So staff puts together a composite map, which is that map you see there, um, where we sort of average the scores for housing conditions, crime, home ownership, all the things that we measure, and then put that information together with, with strengths and anchors. And we develop target areas for the neighborhood to review and to prioritize. So we asked the neighborhood to prioritize these two target areas. So they chose number one there, which is south and east of Scott Magnet as the primary target area. And then the target area to the east along Teft and Winfield and Woodland is the secondary target area. So we also asked the neighborhood to prioritize the infrastructure projects. We, we gather projects for the neighborhood to prioritize by listening to what they say, but also from uh, the evaluation from the city's public works staff who goes out and, and rates the streets and sidewalks and gives us information on what streets they think should be uh, that are needing repair. So um, there's eight projects here that are identified as priority projects. You can see most of those are within the uh, primary target area. So the projects range from a new street uh, at, on 5th Street between California and Market. So that's a brand new street. That's something we heard throughout the process was the condition of that street south of the school. Um, there's also a new roadway project on Market and some mill and overlay on other streets. And then the remainder of the projects in there are sidewalk projects. Seven and eight are projects on the in the secondary target area on the east side, and those are projects on Teft. Uh, they would be sidewalks and curb and gutter, and those two projects are meant to um, uh, help us get other funding. So the the total bill for the priority projects is about one point one million dollars. That leaves about five hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars then that we will use to try to match other. Um, sources of funding to see if we can get other projects done in the neighborhood. So these uh, 12, these uh, projects nine through 12 are 
projects that um, we hope to get done by securing other funding. So number nine there is uh, a, a street project on Taft, which is in the secondary target area. So that's a new roadway. We hope to secure uh, half cent sales tax funding to, to fix the road and we would use the sort funding to do, to do the sidewalks and the curb and gutter. So hopefully if we can get approval for that half cent sales tax project, we can get a new roadway there on Taft and do a complete street. Um, project number 10 there is a connector sidewalk between the secondary target area and the primary target area. So getting uh, folks a more direct route to the school, um, that is a project that we hope to construct um, through a Safe Routes to School grant. So we'll use some funding to match a Safe Routes to School grant and hopefully get funding to do that project. And then 11 and 12 are additional sidewalk projects and there's potentially more that can happen through a KDOT AIC grant. So um, depending on how that grant goes, we can potentially do 11 and 12 there and also some other sidewalks. So ultimately we hope to turn that $565,000 into approximately a million dollars to to get these additional projects for the neighborhood. So the next steps are city council action on this plan and then project design and implementation in 2021 and 2022. Um, with that, I will be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for our team? Oh, Councilwoman Valdivia Alcala, I'm sorry. I, I only have a strip on the side of people. Forgive me. Okay. Well, I can make a comment too, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Thanks for the presentation and also uh, just a, a several things in regards to uh, this sort grant. Bryson was just very, very uh, engaging and flexible to work with. And also, I think that one of the things that we had one of the biggest struggles on was the COVID, was the issue of COVID and how to get people uh, communicating and filling out surveys when, you know, during a pandemic. And so I think that we need to also uh, recognize the job that Latoya and Monique, uh, you know, we put our heads together and developed some really creative ways to try to get folks to answer the surveys and uh, Bryson's work with his outreach and all of the Spanish interpreters, you know, translators that we had were a really added and needed resource and they came in as volunteers. I just wanna point out that in, in the, you know, in all the information that's provided, some of which you're not seeing here, we have to understand that this district as well is uh, continuing to see an increase in poverty. I think that when we look at houses that, you know, have an uh, estimated average value of, you know, 20, a uh, uh, little under $21,000, when we see that 64%, um, uh, you know, of uh, is insufficient sidewalks in the area, 25% of the uh, parcels of land have no curbs and guttering. We know that there is still a lot of work to do because this is still considered a very, uh, uh, you know, intensive uh, care. I think in, in some ways it's, it, it's still considered intensive care, but it's an area that is going to require a lot of our attention, I think, in the future. Without the Latino, uh, the Spanish speaking business owners along that Southeast uh, corridor, I don't think it would be anything uh, of what we're looking at today, but we do need to keep in mind that for the most part, there are reasons that are unknown to us as far as why poverty continues to increase in that area and uh, issues that we can assist with as, as a city to try to uh, continue to help this part of the community along. But everybody, I think, did a really good job with it, especially with the challenges that COVID brought forth. Thank you, Mayor. Other questions or comments for our team? Councilwoman Ortiz. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. Um, I first wanted to thank staff as well. And I also want to thank uh, East Topeka North NIA um, because they've invested in this part of town 
Um, they're NIA for decades. Um, and a lot of people have moved away, um, but they still are a part of their honorary members of the NIA. So I wanted to thank them for their continued work on starting some of the sidewalks and some of the work on the parks that they've already done over there. And they just continue on. Um, I thought I heard this, but I, I just want to make sure, um, Dan, that um, I believe that's Fifth Street from California to, is that Market? And that is in this plan to get that whole street fixed. Is that correct? Councilwoman Ortiz, that is correct. That is a, what we call a, Oh, uh, it's it's a major street project. So the whole, yeah, it's getting a brand new street. Okay, and I and I appreciate that because I know a lot of people have called and called and called and called about that. Um, when the buses are running, there's no sidewalk there. Um, you can't get but two cars on there because half the road is already gone. And uh, I want to thank the city manager for pointing that out. And he was the one when we talked that night at the meeting to, to place that in there so we can get it done quicker and faster. I don't care how it gets done, I just want it done. So um, I appreciate that, appreciate all your hard work. Um, and I think people will, will continue to be happy as we continue improving that area. Um, again, I wanted to thank your staff um, for helping the NIA when they put in all the sidewalks for the schools because there would people don't know that but those sidewalks would not be there if it wasn't for you working hand in hand with the NIA with them um, and so it, it's kind of kind of crazy because on you know East Topeka South they always say why do we stop at 6th Street why didn't we just go across the street you know what you know and so they just don't understand the dynamics of all of that because they just want to make sure that um, we get the kids out of the street and we've done a good job of that over the years, over the last 16, 17 years, we've done a great job of getting those kids out of there. There's a lot of work to be done. It's not going to be done, might not even be done in my time soon, but but I appreciate staff uh, working. I'm excited about getting it, but I hope we can push that fifth street. I hope we can push that as soon as we can to the front forefront so people will um, feel comfortable and safe about driving over there. Again, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Other comments for our team? Again, this is a discussion item. This will be brought to the agenda later on. Um, and if you don't have any questions at this point in time and receive phone calls or feel like you wanna follow up with Mr. Fyander or Mr. Warner um, or anybody on the team for that matter with regards to you know, comments, questions, or feedback that you have received, please feel free to contact them. If there's no other comments or questions at this point in time, uh, we move on to the public comment. There is no one signed up for public comment this evening. We now move on to the announcement announcements, if the clerk would read. Uh, for the 19th agenda, we have five board appointments. Consent agenda, we have one expenditure ordinance. Action items include the election of a deputy mayor, and the election of two voting general board members. And then we'll be amending governing by rule 8.2 regarding um, establishing the public infrastructure committee as a permanent standing council committee. Action items or non-action items include a discussion on zoo license and management agreement, um, the CIP, a finance overview of the CIP, and then discussion on governing body goals and objectives. So. City manager. I have nothing further tonight, Mayor, for announcements. Thank you. Well, I, I will take a moment, uh, first of all, to say that I, I want to acknowledge the tension that all of us are probably carrying with us. Um, these are absolutely trying times. I think that last week after our council meeting, we witnessed something that we would never thought that we would have seen in our country. And um, the we wish that it was done, but it seems that there's reports uh, about capital cities across the country um, also having situations of danger. And at, at this point in time, what I would like to say is, you know, it, it would be easy for us to, to focus on, on blame 
And at this point, I will ask our community to please, and I would plea with everybody. Um, what we saw has hurt all of us. Above all things, all of us who are here are proud to be Americans. Um, I think that it's time for us to hold on to the tenets and the values that we would love to celebrate of this country, of kindness, of unity, of inclusion and belonging. Um, and that does not mean that we all have to think the same. Um, our country has had a peaceful transition of power. We've seen uh, many challenges, but what inspires me of this country and what inspires me of this community is our ability to move forward. So in the days to come, I implore our residents to please be kind to each other, to figure out what you can do to develop and foster a feeling of restoration and of healing. We cannot just look to our leaders and expect our leaders to be the ones that are gonna carry the water on bringing us all together. This is an each one of us taking responsibility for our own part and being willing to be forgiving, kind, and allowing each other the privileges that we would like to have of compassion. Be safe, be kind. Let's respect our leaders. Eventually, you know what? If you don't like a leader, an election is gonna come up pretty soon. Um, so thank you all uh, to our law enforcement officers, to the, the first responders, and uh, my prayers go out to all of those who suffered uh, last week um, and the losses that we had. I appreciate Councilman Padilla for his thoughtfulness of starting the meeting with a moment of silence. Um, let's move forward together. Let's move forward in unity. Um, for those of us who live here, we're, we're, we're Topekans, we're Americans. So thank you very much, uh, Councilman Padilla. Nothing, Mayor. Thank you very much. I appreciate your comments. Councilwoman Nager. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I really appreciate the comments that you have made, and I'm in complete agreement. And I hope that we all come together as a nation and more personally as a city um, to embrace our differences and to celebrate those. Um, and a moment of celebration, I wanted to tip my hat to the NIA um, of College Hill. Last, uh, about 11 months ago, Madam Mayor and I were the, the high, highly esteemed chili cook-off. Co um, oh my gosh, I'm overcome by what you said, and now I can't say what I want to say. Um, <laughs> Chili we were judges. judges, judges, we were the yeah. judges. And we had the hardest slate of chilies to compete against each other. Um, College Hill is blessed with many creative and excellent cooks. And that night, um, while we were having fun with all the chili and with all the sin minerals, because we're Kansans, um, the community was coming together and had, we're, they were deciding what to do with funds that they had raised for different projects in the neighborhood. And over the past year, despite the challenges that COVID has presented, they have come up with the idea of, um, they came up with a couple different ideas, but they have also been working closely with community, um, community foundation and have earned a grant um, for the Leave the Light On project. And it's all about making sure that the neighborhood is well lit, that houses are well lit in order to make the neighborhood not only feel safer, but actually become safer. Make sure that people have a well lit place to live and feel secure in their own homes. And so I just want to congratulate them for all of the hard work that they've been doing for the past year and for the hard work to come. Um, but I'm very proud of District 6 and I am very happy to have that bright spot in our lives. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Councilman Dobler. No comments tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Councilman Duncan. Good evening, everybody. Um, just a few things. Um, 
I will give a shout out to Blue Cross and Blue Shield, although a lot of them deserve it, but they donated a little over $350,000 to the Rescue Mission's um, Food Secure Program, which was obviously a much needed necessity for our community. Um, there may be one of the larger donations, but I know all across the city, there are lots of individuals and others giving to very various programs. I get those emails every once in a while, like I think a lot of us do, sort of asking us what we're quote unquote doing about the homeless problem. Um, I won't rehash the emails I send back here tonight. If you're interested, I'm happy to send you all the various services and support this city offers. But I also always include, if you wanna help the most, give to the organizations that are helping individuals get back on their feet and get back out there. And so that's my reminder in that respect to everybody and my thank you to Blue Cross and everyone else who's giving. The second thing is I'll piggyback a little off what the mayor started with. It's a little more, in the last 24 hours, as the FBI issued their report that all 50 state capitals could face issues, I know that I'm sure some of us got some emails or calls. I had a separate meeting somewhere today, and I was able to check in with our police chief, and I, I asked him about it, and he said he's been getting lots of calls, particularly from businesses in the area around the capital who are wondering, what do we expect during this week? And his assurance is that they are, of course, well aware of what's going on. They are in contact with all the appropriate federal agencies. There is massive coordination between the Capitol Police, the Highway Patrol, the Sheriff's Department, the Topeka Police Department. And so what I can tell everyone is they're on top of it. Nobody really knows what to expect, but they certainly are monitoring everything that they monitor. They will be as ready as they can be. The good news for us here in Topeka and Kansas has been that there have been multiple assemblies and protests at our capital over the past year, and every single one of them has been peaceful. And so I will say to everybody, let's keep it that way. I think we as Kansans have, have learned that our message can be heard loud and clear, and we can do it without harming people and property. And if that's your goal, just know that there's a lot of people watching you. So be, be, on, be, be aware. And with that, I, I thank everyone this evening. Councilwoman Hiller. Just echo the other comments. Thank you, everyone. The, there are tough times, and we've proven that we can engage and and try and move forward together and do things right. So, thank you. Councilwoman Valdivia Alcala. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to just read something. I I penned out real quick. Um, and I would I would hope that we could all take this to heart. And I mean that including myself. So um, for the tragic and horrific insurrection that took place on January 6th, I pray to the ancestors to help us all in prayers for all the persons that died in this siege. The veil has been ripped away and the multiplicity of chasms within our country is laid bare for all to see. This nation was founded atop the bones and awash in the blood of indigenous people. The nation was built with the slave labor and brutal treatment of blacks. Revisionist history has miseducated and misled multitudes with the belief in manifest destiny and white superiority and what it means to be American. White nationalists or other extremists and conspiracy theorists aim their outrage at times towards black and brown folks, sometimes specific parts of the government or one party or the other, rather than understanding the reality that throughout history, the vast majority of Americans have not been told the truth of our countries, our country's founding along with its great many accomplishments. And now we continue to hemorrhage. As in any dysfunctional family, unless the truth is spoken, unless people to awake, awaken to what is, unless critical questions are asked and are asked all around the table, we only pass on the chasms of pain and miscommunication to our children and future generations. Again, may the ancestors help us and the us being we, the human family. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilwoman Ortiz. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I just wanted to point out that um, 501 will go full remote, remote on Monday, January the 18th. Um, they'll, they'll go back until full remote. And 
I wanted to thank um, the Public Health and Safety Committee. Karen is the chair and Neil brought this forward and myself. Um, there's a Connect to Compete program, which is for low to moderate income families. To, uh, it's free to get connected. And uh, we have been working on this for the last um, four or five months. So we're ahead of the curve, but I'm asking everyone, if you're having problems, um, get a hold of one of us to get a hold of Megan. Um, I don't know what kind of problems you could be having, but we are really kind of getting all the bugs out of the system. We want to keep the kids engaged so they don't get any further behind in their schooling. Um, and I, I just thank Neil for bringing this to the table when he did. I don't think he thought it would be as big as it is now, but um, we've gotten a lot of bugs out of the table, 501's on board. Um, and I just want to say that because I don't remember where our percentage is at the last meeting, but we, um, the meeting before that it was at 60, 64%, and we're trying to get 100% of our kids and these families connected. It's free. Cox will come out and they will um, put your modem in and get you going. Um, Mayor, I don't know if you're having problems and it's lagging. Um, you can call them, they can come out and troubleshoot it at no charge. We wanna make sure that people know that there's no charge. And we have found even a board member who was um, got on a meeting with us that got kicked off. Um, and we found sent somebody out and guess what? His, all the wiring needed to be replaced outside. So they are, they are telling you what needs to be done. Um, I, and, I, and I know that there was um, another person that didn't have the updated equipment that was trying. So they're, they're working with us here. And this is where we all need to come together to keep our kids going because our kids really, really need this. It's mentally challenging for them, um, um, not only be, for, you, for the users, for them using it, but for them not being around their buddies. So we need to make sure that we keep them in class and we need to make sure that they get it. So this Connect to Compete, it's free, and we want 100% of our students on. So if you know of anybody, give us a call. Let us know so we can help you. Um, and it's, and it's, some people have had their, their modems go out. That, that They told them that their modem was getting ready to go out, so we can, we can do that. May I, I appreciate uh, your thoughts and prayers on what's happened um, in Washington, and we just need to continue to... Um, Pray for each other and pray for all the capitals. I know I've talked to some of the elderly people that said, that have just cried to me on the phone and said, this, this was very disturbing to them because it brought back a lot of old feelings of when they were going through um, some of the civil marches and stuff like that. And it was just, ha it was just sad to hear that, you know, um, from that point of view, you know, with the kids that are asking what the heck is going on, you know, and trying to explain that to our young people, to my um, number one grandson who's 13 and, and just doesn't understand, just doesn't understand why, why we all can't get along and why, why we're acting the way that we're acting. So um, anyway, I just wanted to say that um, again, thank you for your comments. And I wanted to also thank um, Mr. Padilla, uh, Councilman Padilla for, for, um, for doing that. Thank you. Deputy Mayor. Uh, nothing tonight, Mayor, thank you. Okay, um, we do have an executive session. If the city attorney can please read the parameters. The motion is to recess into executive session for a period of time not to exceed 20 minutes to discuss confidential employment matters pertaining to non-elected personnel as justified by KSA 75-4319B1 in order to protect the privacy of those discussed. To aid in the discussion, the following individuals should be present. Members of the governing body, City Manager Brent Trout and Human Resources Director Jackie Russell. No action will be taken when the open meeting resumes. Lisa, my computer is, did you say 20 minutes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have heard the parameters of the executive session. Councilwoman Ortiz moves to approve. Do we have a second? Deputy Second. Mayor seconds it. At this point in time, if there's no questions, we proceed by voting to enter into this executive session. Mayor De La Isla? Yes. 
Council Member Siller? Yes. Valdivia Aqua? Yes. Ortiz? Yes. Emerson? Yes. Padilla? Yes. Nagar? Yes. Dobler? Yes. And Duncan? Yes. We have nine yes, motion carries. We will have a short recess while we transition out of the screens and get into our executive session not to exceed 20 minutes. We are coming out of the executive session. We are in need of reconvening into the same executive session under the same parameters for a time to uh, not to exceed 10 more minutes. Um, if we need more time, we will uh, come back out and come back in again. Um, do we have a motion in order for us to reconvene? Did so Mayor moved. make that motion? Do we have a second? Councilwoman Nager seconds that motion. Um, additional comments or questions? Okay, we would uh, call the vote. All of those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Being that none is opposed, we are going to re-enter the executive session. Our executive session has concluded. No action has been taken. Being that there are no more items in front of the council, this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>